So what is God's will for your life? Have you ever asked yourself that question? We all ask ourselves those questions. So you might be thinking, well, Marcus can do this because, Joni can do it because, they can do it because, Nicole can, Doe can do it because. No, you can do it because. Because why? Because of Philippians 4, 19. The amplified version, I want you to look for the word will. It says, my God will liberally supply your every need, full to overflowing, by the way, according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. What is the Lord's will? His will is to liberally supply you with the joy that you need, with the strength that you need, with the healing that you need, with the finances that you need, with the courage that you need. It's God's will to liberally supply you. Number two, it says in Matthew 6, 33, it says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. It's God's will to add to you. Here's the thing about God. It's an if-then statement. It says, if you seek, then he'll add. And here's what you're doing watching day start a day. You're seeking him. God wants to liberally supply you. God wants to add to you. Let's go to another thing, Luke 6, 38. It says, give in it will. Here's God's will. Be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will God cause men to give unto your bosom. God will give to you. Again, it's an if then. God says, it's my will for you to give. And when you do give, it's my will to give to you. In Matthew 6, 33, it's my will for you to seek. But when you do, I will add to you. See, if we do the will of what he wants, just pressing into him, doing what he says, loving and giving, then he gives to us. He raises us up. He raises you up. One more thing as we close here in just a minute. Why am I giving you so much scripture? Because I am trying to convince you biblically that this is not where you are stuck and this is not where you stop. This is a place where you camp for a moment, but then you are moving on and you are moving up. So let's close with John 15, 5. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, if you remain in the Lord, he will cause you, you will bear much fruit. You need to learn to think how God thinks. You need to learn to think how God thinks about you. And God says, you are not over. You are just beginning. You know, one night my husband walked in and he had a revolver. He was coming down from crack and he put the revolver in my mouth. Not a Glock where you can't see if there's a bullet and you semi-automatic. No, the thing like a John Wayne gun, a cowboy gun, I could see the bullets. He put it in my mouth and he pulled the trigger. The bullet didn't come out. I didn't care if he was alive or dead 10 minutes before that because if he was gone, then he couldn't hurt me anymore. But as he turned the gun from me and turned it to himself and said, I can't do it anymore, I can't do it anymore, I can't do it anymore, he pulled the trigger again. And the bullet didn't come out. As I wrote about that in the book, and I watched two miracles happen, 122nd, the Lord spoke to me. And he said, that's like the enemy. He's shooting his best shot at you. And you think you just got a cute little wiggle when you walk, but you are honestly doing matrix moves in the spirit. And as if the enemy shoots at you, you are dodging bullets even when you don't know that you are. And that's what the enemy has to contend with. He can't take you down. God is on your side. The blood has been supplied and God has places for you to go. You are a blessing going somewhere to be a blessing to someone else.